You've tuned in to Larger Than Life with Pastor Ron Hint of Calvary Chapel, Houston. Here's a preview from Pastor Ron of today's message. It says this, Lord, this is David speaking, you've searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down, you know when I rise up in the morning, you understand my thoughts afar off. In other words, before I'm even thinking it, you know what I'm gonna think, you know what I'm thinking, Lord. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all my ways. In fact, there's not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it all together. So God knows us. He knows us intimately. And the great thing, his knowledge of us is not to bring us down, but to bring us higher. It feels great to feel known by someone, but how often do you feel known to the point of complete trust? In his message, Pastor Ron says that God knows you inside and out. He knows every intricate detail of your life. That's why he can care and guide you the best. If you trust God with your life, he can take you places higher than you've ever been before. He loves you and is always thinking of your best interest above all. Trust God today. Allow him to bring you to heights you've never reached before. Well, let's join Pastor Ron in the book of John chapter 10 with today's edition of Larger Than Life. Another thing about sheep is they're absolutely defenseless. They have no natural defenses. So if a a wolf or a cougar or a fox gets them in their sights, they're dead, they're gone. I mean, the best that a sheep can do is run. And they don't even always do that. Sometimes they freak out. If there's a, they see a wolf, they go. <clears throat> that doesn't do any good. You're like, you're like a steak dinner right there. You're mutton for a meal, man. Boom, you're on, they're on you. So isn't that amazing? It's like, think about this. God, all other animals have a defense. I mean, your cat's got claws, your dog's got teeth. Even if you got a chicken, it's got a beak. God gave nothing to sheep. It's almost like God said, I'm gonna create all the animals, in the, but I'm gonna make sheep because I want something that's like my people. There they are. Can't see very far, can't defend themselves. They get dirt. Man, that's it. So now you're thinking your sheep, it's like, oh, wait, that's not so great, is it? Well, it actually is because the Lord loves us, but he cares for us. So he commissions, you know, under shepherds, pastors to shepherd the sheep, to represent Jesus. He loves his sheep. So Jesus says, he who enters by the door, that's the shepherd of the sheep. Verse three, to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Now understand this. I just want to look at the context, first of all, here. Jesus is referring to the nation of Israel in relationship to the law that they were under and leading them into the new fold of the new covenant. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He fulfilled that at the cross through his death and resurrection. He paid the penalty for our sin. And he's now coming. He's bringing in the new covenant of grace. By the way, we know that Jesus is referring to Israel because in verse 16, he says this, and other sheep I have who are not of this fold. He's referring to the Gentiles. They also I'm going to bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock. That's the church, ladies and gentlemen, and there will be one shepherd. So in context, Jesus is first talking about the religious leaders, the thieves and robbers, and he's talking about the fold. He's reaching out to Israel, and he's talking about saying, I've got a new fold. I'm beginning a new work. I'm calling people to come into the fold of my love, of my grace. So he calls his sheep by name. He leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, out of the law, out of the old covenant, he goes before them. The sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So who are those that even were beginning to follow Jesus? His 12 disciples. They began to follow him. Nicodemus, one of the religious leaders, he was now following Jesus. The woman at the well following Jesus. The guy in the last chapter, chapter 9, was now following Jesus. They'd come out of the old covenant, now following Christ. That's the contextual understanding of the passage. But if we look deeper, I do want to pull out some analogies here that we see from here. I think there are four great spiritual principles that come out of verses three and four. The first thing is this. He tells us here, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. He says it clearly in verse three. The sheep hear his voice. Verse four, the sheep follow him for they what? Know his voice. So that word here is the Greek word akuo. We get our English word acute. You know, it speaks of something that's keen or perceptive or attentive or precise or pinpoint hearing. It's acute hearing. So this is something good that sheep have. Sheep have great hearing. They may not see well, but if they hear when something's going on because they're very skittish creatures. But here's the great thing. 
they come accustomed to hearing their shepherd's voice. As I said, you know, the shepherd will speak his voice. And what happens is a little lamb from the time it's brought forth from its mother and it's part of the flock, it's hearing the shepherd's voice every single day. It gets accustomed to that. And he will not follow a stranger, but he'll follow the good shepherd. Now, here's what's interesting. As I mentioned, these sheepfolds around the Jerusalem area, which Jesus is referring to here, could encompass several, maybe even three flocks of sheep that would come at night. The shepherds just bring them in, and they would share them communally for the evening. And then they'd have to be let out the next day. Well, if you have all these sheep all mixed together, how do they know the shepherd's voice? J.L. Porter writes about this as he was over there in Palestine. He says, quote, as we sat, the hillsides around us were in a moment filled with life and sound. The shepherds led their flocks forth from the gates of the city. They were in full view, and we watched them and listened with much interest. Thousands of sheep and goats were there, grouped in dense, confused masses, The shepherds, that's plural, stood together until they all came out and then they began to separate, each shepherd taking a different path, uttering the advance of his particular call. The sheep heard them. At first, the masses swayed and moved, as shaken by some internal convulsion. Then points struck out in various directions taken by the shepherds. These became longer and longer until the confused masses were resolved into long living streams of flowing sheep with their shepherds. So that illustrates this point of how the the sheep know the particular voice of their shepherd and they follow it. So here's the thing. When you give your life to Christ, when you are born again, God gives you a new set of ears. You don't see it, but it's spiritually true. All of a sudden, for the very first time, you're hearing the voice of God. We read in Isaiah 30 and verse 21, God says, and your ears shall hear the word of God saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. So God will speak to us. Now, primarily, God will speak to us so we hear him through his word. That's the number one, the predominant way, I would say. God gives us his word. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us that all of scripture is given of inspiration. It means God breathed. Inspiration of God. And it's profitable for us to hear God, to follow God. And so we have to be in his word and he'll give us direction. Another way that God will speak to us is through circumstances. Now, sometimes God will speak clearly. Man, I know that's the Lord. I mean, let's say you know, I'm, we're praying about moving our home and you know, moving closer to the church. And so let's just see if it's the Lord. You put your house up for sale and it sells in two days. It's probably the Lord. God wants you to move. You open the door. You put your house up for sale and it's up for sale for three years. Probably God wants you there not to move, you know. That's pretty obvious, right? But here's one thing about God speaking through circumstances because sometimes people can get overly mystical, you know, when it comes to that. If he's speaking through a circumstance, that circumstance will never violate his word. And that's very important. Because let's say you lose your job. And I praise God I lost my job. I didn't want to work anyway. I'm just going to hang out on the street corners and preach Jesus. Well, that might be nice, but the Bible says if a man won't work, neither shall he eat. So you violate scripture. So you always want to make sure in that circumstance it's, it's biblical. By the way, another way that God speaks to us is just through his creation. Listen to Psalm 19 in verse 1. It says, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. In other words, you can be anywhere in this planet. This gives the person who's an idol worshiper no excuse. I don't care where you're at in the remotest part of the Amazon. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day and today utters his speech that there is a creator. So if I don't know who that creator is, no one told me it's Jesus, but I'm worshiping a monotheistic God who made the heavens and the earth, I'm gonna be right on. But if I make a rock and say, you're my God, I'm an idolater, and God will hold me accountable to that. People always worry, what about the person in the remote area? God takes care of that. He's got creation to speak to the mind of any person. Now, that Romans chapter one tells us he's put his law in the hearts, knowing right from wrong. God's created us that way. So that man, it says in Romans, is without excuse. But God speaks through creation. Another way God speaks is he'll speak through human instruments. Is is that amazing or what? God will use a sermon. He'll use a sermon to speak to you. He'll use somebody in your life that comes up and says, you know, I've just been feeling this. And he said, wow, how did you know that? 
God will speak through individuals. We, so God gives us a new set of ears to hear from. So principle number one, God's sheep hears voice. Secondly, the good shepherd knows his sheep and he calls us by name. It says that in verse three. He calls his own sheep by name. Isn't that cool? I mean, from the time a little sheep is born, a lamb, the shepherd will name him. So that lamb is hearing his voice, but not only that, he names him. And most shepherds will name, especially if they have a lot of sheep, either by something, a certain way they look, or maybe one of the characteristics of their new little life, you know? Might call them, you know, brown spot, or brown ear, or black leg, you know? That's what they look like. Or they might call the sheep ornery, right? Troublemaker, cuddly. You know, we do that with our little dogs. We have little names or cats, right? Well, that's how a shepherd, but he'll name each one distinctly. And don't you know that's what God does with us? He's named us. He knows us. And we've gotten our name from our moms and dads, but God knows us quite well. In fact, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Did you know that? It tells us that in Psalm 139. It says this, Lord, this is David speaking, you've searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down. You know when I rise up in the morning. You understand my thoughts afar off. In other words, before I'm even thinking it, you know what I'm gonna think. You know what I'm thinking, Lord. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all my ways. In fact, there's not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it all together. So God knows us. He knows us intimately. And the great thing, his knowledge of us is not to bring us down, but to bring us higher. He knows us so well, and he's looking in our lives saying, Ron, you need to get this out of your life. Hey, Ron, you picked up a lot of crud from the world. Do you mind if I take this? Oh, oh, no, I like this crud. This crud is great. Hanging around with these horrible people is wonderful. It's blessing my life. Watching this garbage on TV, it's blessing my mind. And God's like, I don't think so. Can I? No, I really like this. And then five years later, you look like you've aged another 20 years in your life, your whole life, ugh. And spiritually, you look like a pickle, you know? You've just been <laughs> shriveled up, you know? And God says, you, could I revitalize you? Can I, can I help you out? Okay, God, you know? And you just come back to the shepherd. All of a sudden, your life begins to have joy again. You begin to have peace again. You need to get right with God again. So maybe that could be you. You could be wandering. You're believing you've been wandering, and you come back into the sheepfold, man, Just surrender to Jesus. Let him take control of your life. He'll do a much better job. He is a good shepherd. There's a third principle I want us to see here, and that is the fact that the shepherd leads his sheep. Look at verse three. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Verse four, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. So he's leading them, and how does he do it? Well, he goes before them, because sheep are not like cattle. You drive cattle. Sheep, you have to lead them. You try to drive sheep, that's like trying to herd cats. It won't work. So you gotta direct the sheep. You gotta lead them lovingly, and that's what a good shepherd does. He takes them out to pasture. We think of Psalm 23, right? He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. That's the good shepherd. That's what he does. Now, one of the things that a shepherd will do And this is particularly true over in the area of Israel that Jesus, of course, was referring to, is that the shepherds then and still do, they take the sheep out in the morning way before daybreak, way before the sun rises. And why is that? Well, there are several reasons why. Number one, it's very arid, right? So it's dry, So most of the moisture you're gonna get is from the dew in the morning. So the sheep are gonna be able to get some of the dew as they're eating the vegetation. And there's limited water sources, and not all the water sources are even allowed to be used by the sheep because they can get those water sources dirty because they can be dirty. That's how sheep are. So it's limited. So the most amount of water that they're gonna get is usually gonna be in the early hours of the morning in their their eating of the vegetation. Secondly, it's cooler in the morning. Over in the Middle East, when you get into the afternoon, it's hot and the sheep aren't eating. They're trying to get some shade and just relax. And not only that, the bugs are limited in the early morning hours. So the sheep can get up, they can get what their water source they need, they can get in a comfortable surroundings and not be pestered by all of the bugs and the flies that can so cause problems. So it's in the morning that the good shepherd leads them out and, and feeds them. Now I would say this, I have found in my own life, 
and I believe this is true of every believer, to be honest with you, that the best time to take advantage of being fed from God is in the early morning hours. I have found over the years that the early hour is the best. Why? Well, because the kids are asleep, because the cars aren't driving around. There's limited noises. In fact, there's hardly any, and I can hear more clearly. There's less distraction. It's just me alone. It's pure quiet, and I've got my Bible, and I've got my ears attuned to hear from God through his word or to communicate to my heart through prayer, and God is faithful to speak to me. By the way, I got some good spiritual and scriptural basis for that. It's Jesus himself. Let me give you Mark 1.35. It says, and early in the morning, Jesus rose up a great while before day. He went out and he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. This was the pattern of Jesus. But I think it's a good pattern for us, right? Now, it's hard work to do that. Now, my wife tells me all the time, but you're just a morning person and I am. Naturally, I am a morning person but I've had to get up even early in the morning than I would really actually like to get. I'd like to get up at six o'clock. I won't sleep past six. That's impossible for me. But I push myself to get up at 4.30 in the morning. Today, I actually slept in a half hour. I went to five. You're like, oh, how horrible is that, right? But I have to afford, my body doesn't want to do that, but I do that because I know for me, I need to do that because I need to hear from God. And I just think that's important. I know you want that. I'm your pastor. You're like, yeah, you need to get up early. You need to hear from God. You do, Pastor. That's your business, buddy. Yeah, but listen, it's the business of all of us. We're his sheep. We want to hear from him. Uh, suffice to say, the day gets going. You, you're too busy. I don't have time to read my Bible. I've got, got things. i got the kids over here. i got work over here. i got this. And then come in the day. Well, it's pretty busy. Now, some of you, hey, I realize you don't have an opportunity. You have to get up early in the morning. Go. Then do it in the evening. But it is harder. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. There's a war going on. We're told that in Galatians 5, 17, that the spirit, my spirit, is fighting against my flesh and the flesh against my spirit. And the battle is not to do what I should do. And so there's a battle going on all the time. And I think we miss so much if we miss those early morning hours. So the good shepherd leads the sheep out. He would do that early in the morning. Then there's a fourth principle here, and that's the fact that the sheep follow the good shepherd. Jesus says in verse four, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. We read the same thing down in verse 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So the true sheep will, will always follow. They'll respond to the call and the leading of the true shepherd. So think about this. True sheep will always follow the true shepherd, which tells us that those who aren't part of a sheepfold don't follow the shepherd. So if a person's not following the good shepherd, suffice to say they're not one of the sheep, then that happens. It even is true of people who at one time follow the good shepherd because we read that back in John chapter six and verse 66. Jesus began to say, hey, look, this is what it really means to follow me. If you really wanna follow me, and he began to lay it out, and it says in John 6, 66, from that time on, many of his disciples, people that referred to themselves as disciples, followed him no more. They weren't really his sheep. They weren't part of the sheepfold. And that happens. Happens even today. First John 2, 19 says, people go out from us, and we're talking about the whole body of Christ, because they're not of us. Because if they had been of us, believers, they would have continued with us. But they go out that it might be manifest that they are not of us. Jesus put it this way in John 8, 31. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. So it's the idea of continuance. Now, can someone be a believer and fall away for a period of time? Of course they can. Of course a sheep can wander. That might even be you. You might have done that before and you've come back or maybe you're in that condition right now. I'm glad you're here and God wants you to stay in the fold. Because Jesus did give the example of the one sheep straying, and he leaves the fold to go rescue him, to rescue him. And maybe you need to be rescued. Well, you've come to the right place. Jesus brought you here, you know. Stay in the fold. Don't wander. Don't get all the crud from the world. You're going to get cast down again if you do. But listen, before we gave our lives to Christ, we were all like sheep, and we were all going astray. It tells us that in Isaiah 55 or 53, Verse six, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray and everybody turns to his own way. 
And that's the way of the world. We just do our own thing, man. This is the right way. I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna go my own way. Well, there's a problem with that because Proverbs 14, 12 says there's a way that seems right to man, but its way ends with death. And so Jesus comes along and he says, hey, Ron, you're going your way. That way is not the right way, but guess what? I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And if you follow me, you'll come to heaven. You'll get, I'm like, oh, Lord, that's what I need. I'm so thankful he, I heard the call at a younger age and responded. What a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus began to tell me what it really meant to be a disciple. It tells us in Luke 9, 23, if any man will follow me, he must take up his cross, deny himself, and follow me. So it's a daily walk. It's a constant dying to myself. Yes, Lord, I want you to lead my life. And he's faithful to do that. So here we see that the sheep know the shepherd's voice. The good shepherd knows his sheep. The good shepherd leads his sheep. And listen, if you're a true sheep, you'll follow the good shepherd. And if you're not following him, I would encourage you today, make that decision to follow him. Now, we've seen the deception of the false shepherds, the direction of the true shepherd. Real quickly, just the discernment of the sheep. We see this in verse five. He says, yet by, they will by no means follow a stranger. They'll flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Well, of course, the sheep know the voice of what is right. But think about this today. If we would think about this in this context, we're bombarded by the voice of strangers, the voice of false teachers all of the time. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and verse 15, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. There's a lot of them, right? They want to deceive the sheep into following what is false. But here's one of the dangers. If you're not walking close with Jesus, and this is one of the things I see happening in the church today, if you're not walking close with the Lord, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not in fellowship, and you're far from the Lord, you're over here, it's hard to discern what is from God and what is not. And the only way to be discerning is walking close to the good shepherd. Then I can discern the voice of strangers and the voice of Jesus. And so notice verse six, Jesus used this illustration, but they, who's that? That's the religious leaders. He was indicting the religious leaders, did not understand the things which he spoke to them. That's precisely his point. They were false teachers. They didn't even understand that Jesus was talking about them. And so we need to be on our guard as sheep of God. We gotta have a close relationship. We gotta be walking with them. And I'll tell you what, this is, this is a wonderful passage. We're gonna learn a lot of wonderful truths as we look at this beautiful analogy that Jesus teaches. My greatest prayer certainly is that you're walking with the Lord, that you've heard the voice of God and you're following him. If not, that you would do it today. If you've never made a decision for Christ, you'd do it today. Jesus put it so simply in Revelation chapter three, verse 20, he said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock and if any man, here it is, hears my voice. If you just hear it, you've heard it today. We've been reading from God's word. He's communicating. If you just hear my voice and open the door, that's all you gotta do. Open the door. What's open the door? Open the door is faith. Okay, Lord, I believe in you. Open the door is saying, hey, take my life. Opening the door is opening up your heart. However you wanna put it, opening the door is saying, yes, Lord. He says, if anyone hears my voice and will open the door, I'll come in. I'll change your life. I'll make it so much better. And you don't have to do this thing on your own. The only question is, are you willing? He's not gonna force you. He won't force you to do it. You say, well, when I get my life all cleaned up, I'll do it, man, because I don't have it all together. Don't worry, come as you are. Now, here's the thing. You can come as you are, but Jesus won't keep you the way you are, which is good, because he'll begin to change you. Ah, I don't need it. I got, I got it all together. Listen, some of you are, got your sleeves pulled up, and you're gonna, you're gonna box with God. Oh, no way, God. I got this thing covered. Really? Dude, your arms are not long enough. He, he, this is God we're talking about. He's gonna beat you every time. And he's been chasing you down. Maybe some of you, he's been chasing you down. For some of you, he's been calling you back. Where have you been? Man, there you are. You're in church today. You're hearing my voice. Will you respond? Some of you have been wandering. You need to come back into the fold. That's great. Some of you, for the very first time, Listen, I just want you to know, Jesus changed his lives and it's good. There are a lot of satisfied customers here. Why don't you become one of them? Because it's good. It's good to walk with Jesus. I'm just telling you, I want you to experience what I experienced, what so many experienced, but that's your choice. You've just heard Pastor Ron Hint and the radio ministry of Calvary Houston here on Large Than Life. Pastor Ron's currently in the Gospel of John. John is one of the four books in the Bible that describes the life, ministry, and teachings of Jesus Christ. 
In his short time here on earth, Jesus changed the world and the entire course of human history through his life, death, and resurrection. Whether you joined us halfway through our program today or you caught just the ending, we'd encourage you to visit the link that provides this message in its entirety and other messages like this one. All you have to do is visit ltlradio.org and click on the teaching archive. Do you feel like you're constantly on the go with no time to slow down? You're not alone. And the good news is we've got you covered. You can listen to more of Pastor Ron's message by downloading our mobile app, which is available on our website, ltlradio.org. Were you aware that Larger Than Life is also in podcast form? All you have to do is subscribe. So don't leave that website without doing that. Are you in the Friendswood, Texas area? Do you have a church you call home? If not, we'd like to invite you to join our community as we worship Jesus together. Service times and directions can be found on our website, ltlradio.org. That's all the time we have for today, but we hope you join us again to hear more great teachings right here on Larger Than Life.